Paul Fletcher. Um, I'm from the Commonwealth and I'm here to help Western Sydney. It's fantastic. And uh, the Minister, not only for the Great Badgerys Creek, but the other great federally funded project in Western Sydney in, in infrastructure, the Moorbank Intermodal Terminal down in the southwest, providing jobs and logistics and smart robotics and everything will be part of that. So, Minister, thank you very much for your, your contribution. Uh, as always, um, I've known this bloke since university days and um, I, for one, uh, uh, delighted to have you not only as the Minister for Urban Infrastructure, but I hope fairly soon the Cabinet Minister for Cities and Urban Infrastructure. I keep wanting to thrust more greatness on Paul and uh, he'll deliver that in spades. So thank you very much. Look, I'm going to have a bit of fun now. We've been lectured all morning, so I just wanted to take, as we sit here today at Boomtown talking about imagining a Western Sydney towards 2050. And that's about 33 years hence in my, in my sums. And uh, it's instructive if you can look 33 years ahead and what are the type of social and economic infrastructure to manage that sort of growth, to maybe also think about you know, what it was like 33 years ago, where we've come from. So when you look at that Western Sydney story, it does start small, from 84 through to 2050. It's not a lot of time in, um, by Chinese standards, about a blip in time. By Australian standards, it's a fair hike. But we're just, having lived the last 30, what, what can we expect for the next 30? In, um, as he says, looking for his clicker, which is somewhere here and someone will bring to me because I can't find it, or you can click for me. Um, in 1984, we had 1.2 million people. It was pretty small. Um, and the growth of that has been, has been quite remarkable. The rate, rate of change has been very, very fast. Thank you, Lauren. They hid my clicker, didn't they? They told me it was on stage. There we go. The rate of change has been really quick. 83% increase in population in that period um, to go from 1.2 to 2.2 million just in those 30 years. There you go. Read it and wait. $60,000 median house price back in 84, now almost 750,000, a massive rise in value and in, a, and, in afford, and in lack of affordability. It means whether you're in the market or you want to get in the market, as always. Look at Kemp's Creek. Here's the power of the airport that Paul Fletcher's just talking about. The same block of land, 105,000 in the 80s, now $5.15 million. Uh, was Tony Perrich. He knows a thing or two about Roy Medich. They're all in the room. They know a thing or two about escalating land prices in the southwest, and there's living, breathing examples. But uh, a lot of things have changed in price at the same time. Look at the petrol 45 cents to a buck 39, buck 40. Litre of milk, every politician's favourite uh, quote as to what's a, what's a litre of milk cost. Well, my staff tell me two bucks 15. Uh, litre now. Or a long neck, more my, more my style. Buck 54 up to seven bucks. Those sin taxes just keep kicking in. Technology changed everything. It's not a great photo, but that was WSU, Western City Uni, on whose board I proudly sit. Uh, the Hawkesbury Agricultural College back in 1984. Look at that now, the brand new, brand spanking new downtown Peter Shergold building in Parramatta. Just turned on, it's remarkable, downtown universities. Look at Time Magazine back in the day. A young, young Bill Gates with floppy disks. It's just, the changes we've had are, are remarkable. But when you think back to, everybody thinks their own mind, what were they doing in 984? Let me show you what I was doing. Wow, look at that. <laughs> I was doing Don Johnson impersonations. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave that photo on all day now. Just look at that all day. <laughs> on the way up, a young woman called Hayley Bryan, who works at St George Bank, in fact, used to work with me, young bright investment banker, said, you know what I was doing in 984? I wasn't born just to really make me feel bad. Thank you, Hayley. So what will Western Sydney look like in another 30 years? If that's the 30 years change we've, we've been through. A bit like me, it's gonna get larger. It's gonna, uh, look at that, airports, buildings, uh, hotels uh, at, at Inglis, uh, the level of infrastructure, the billion dollars a month that Tim Ridden and Andrew Constant spoke about this morning. That's why it's gonna get bigger to cope with growth. And that'll see $122 billion of growth in the, in the regional product of Western Sydney. $122 billion extra. We're paying our way. Oh, sorry, I'm back one there. Um, if you look at those, the, the jump is just staggering in any economic terms. Most governments around the world in different parts are always looking, how do they stimulate growth? How do they get that going? The unique challenge for Western Sydney is how to manage growth, which is not, not as easy to do. There, there's the growth, 75% of population to be added in that period or as I like to think of it, going from 2.4 to 4 plus million, that is putting the entire state of Western Australia into Western Sydney. 
Now, sadly, what we won't get is all the infrastructure that services Western Australia moved over when that equivalent population moves in. So just people talk about building another Canberra in the southwest of Sydney, we're taking all of WA and housing every member, every person in that state in West, well, not all of them. Gina Reinhardt, mm, um, not all of them, most of them, everyone's welcome. That means in Blacktown, we'll have a population the equivalent of the ACT and the Territory. So two territories together, the equivalent of just the Blacktown LGA. Just think of the challenges in public service provision, in roads, in hospital beds, in schools, in stadia and theatres, and, and training human capital, in TAFE classrooms, university campuses, and high schools. Hospital beds that Danny O'Connor's got to build in from um, Western Sydney Health, or that Amanda's got to do down in the southwest. It's massive change. Just in say, speaking of the southwest, just a little bit of change there, 84% growth. And I know there's a, there's a growing momentum in, in Western Sydney itself. We're getting, we're getting so sophisticated now, we're divvying up Western Sydney. And the southwest has a right to feel that it's its own region emerging. Um, I annoy Jeff Roberts sometimes, talking about maybe the fourth city eventually that's coming. I know we're still betting down the three, but in the long term, you've got to imagine a southwest Sydney, Illawarra, fourth city of Sydney, just for the sheer size, geographic. So Western City's unfortunately also getting older, it's getting sicker and it's getting hotter. And they're the things we're gonna have to address. That's another photo of me. Um, you know, the growth. Like, we're, not, we're, growing, we're, we're a younger community, but like the rest of Western Sydney, we're growing older, which leads to impacts on social service provision and medicine. It's also, sadly, the diabetes and obesity capital of the Western world already. One in two people in Western Sydney has or is in danger of contracting diabetes a massive, massive health impact on the, on the uh, Western Sydney, South Western Sydney health districts, both in terms of hospitals and hospital care and primary health care. And managing that alone will be quite a challenge for us. We're also getting hotter, a lot hotter. We're getting hotter than the rest of Sydney, the heat islands that are being developed. And in all infrastructure and city planning, we have to give consideration to that. We have to plant more trees. We've got to have walkable cities. We've got to give Western Sydney access to the sort of casual recreational water use that the city, the eastern suburbs and the North Shore takes for granted, and Western Sydney doesn't. It's our birthright, as well as everyone else's birthright, to get wet as Australians. Uh, we can't just have rivers where shopping centres are, are, are having babies, shopping carts are growing, multiplying in rivers. So how do we get to 2050? Um, we have to improve, physically get there. We've got to improve connectivity. You know, there's a typical picture of peak hour to and from the squinters, as they call us, to and from Western Sydney. That has a dollar figure. I know it's sometimes rubbery economics, but there is a dollar figure to it. $65 billion in reducing congestion benefit. Education, we have to focus, as we're doing a lot today on the physical capital of the region, we have to focus on its human capital. We've got to reinvest in TAFE. We've got to make TAFE sexy again. We've got to get trade skills. And I don't mean just develop, just training tradies, but I mean, why wouldn't TAFE take over coding? Why wouldn't TAFE be doing all tourism training? Why wouldn't TAFE be stepping up more into vocational effort beyond the, the Blue Singlet Brigade where it's been siphoned off to? Um, as well as increasing our funding into university education. And in my view, having TAFE and universities work a lot closer together. So we get, we get that, we get that increased productivity. We've put a little list together, as you wouldn't imagine, and we've spoken today about the Metro. The single most important project has to be getting the link between Parramatta and the CBD, or Parramatta Westmead and the CBD via the Metro that Andrew Constance championed today. But we want to go a little further. It can't just stop at Parramatta Westmead. Keep going out to Penrith. This has to, we have to double that metro, that western line, the most congested public transport route in Australia that is groaning under the weight of demand. We have to take it beyond Westmead, straight through to Penrith, intersecting, picking up the great city of Blacktown, intersecting with the north-south train from Campbelltown to Rouse Hill. I'm sick of people asking us, oh, which one do you want, which should you have? We damn well want both of them. The city isn't asked you what the North Shore line or the Eastern Suburbs line. Guess what? They got both and they didn't pay for either. We're offering to pay for both of them ourselves with value capture. So um, I don't want, I think it's entirely inappropriate for federal and state governments or private sector to be constantly asking which one do you need. We need both and we need them, we need them soon. We want a metrified Sydney. We want proper modern transport. We don't want the odd red ratless. We want, we want uh, trains where you, you know, there mightn't be drivers, but you don't need timetables either. We've waited this long for public transport. We intend to go right to the top of the tree with the quality of public transport we get. 
but you're not going to get a Western Sydney housing and other two and a half million people if you don't govern it better. And with respect, I don't like the term local government reform that the Baird government went through because there wasn't much reform. There were a few boundaries changed and then some of those were changed back. The true reform we need is proper local government. A City of Parramatta Act, treat it like the true CBD you keep saying it is. Why does the City of Sydney have a City of Sydney Act with all the powers and Parramatta's treated like a suburban council? And similarly, cascading down to the Liverpools and Blacktowns and Penriths, uh, and Campbelltowns and others for the region. We want popularly elected mayors. We should vote for our own mayor like they do in the city. But we also don't want councils then going firing CEOs because they don't like them. We want them to have sign off by state government so we get some solidarity. And we want great delivery agencies. We'll, in the next panel after morning two, we'll be talking about, but what's next for, for, for the Greater Sydney Commission? What role for infrastructure in South Wales? What role for the um, Sydney Olympic Park Authority? Where do we go? We're doing lots of great planning. Let's start thinking about delivery to go on from the planning and actually making it happen. STEAM, it used to be called STEM, apparently arts is what STEAM now. So uh, STEAM and soft skills, a true investment in our education, a must have. So we end the jobs deficit of 200,000 people short of jobs, people commuting every day to jobs in the city when they should be having jobs close to home. Smart local jobs, not just jobs, that it, we'd have copped jobs at any standard 20 years ago. Well, now the region's demanding smart jobs. The smart jobs that health and education bring, that an airport delivers, the densified cities and high-tech parks and the science parks of the world will deliver. That's what we're after. We're after the blue and green grid that uh, Lucy's uh, colleagues have been um, um, championing at the, at the Commission. The blue grid, the green grid, great parks, great open spaces and clean water. As I said before, the people of, of Balmoral and, and, and Bondi can go for a dip after work or go for a nice twilight sail, which is gorgeous. And to the credit of all governments, the cleanliness of the water, of the harbour and the beaches is something which we should have international pride. Just as we should have global shame for the quality of water we're experiencing in Western Sydney. We send our water to the east to drink every day. How about helping us clean it up so people can have a swim in a, in a local waterway? Now, what's over the horizon? A lot of that's catch up. What's next? What's in the long term? The stuff Duncan, you know, the deity himself. I want to get Duncan Gay, the, the, the deity. I prayed for you, sir. I thought you were marvellous. And uh, it's good to have you back in the room. Lucy and I are in lockstep on this. as a unity ticket. Take Parliament to Parramatta, or as I say, return government to Central Sydney, where Lachlan Macquarie had it originally. If we are truly to consider Parramatta as the centre of Sydney now, and with a central part, also be the centre of government. The city of Sydney will always be the centre of the commercial heart of Sydney. Parramatta should be its administrative core with the satellite suburbs around it. Um, there's already four and a half, five thousand bureaucrats headed there or moved there, one, like the Commission. One would also take the Parliament building, the press gallery, the lobbyists, the bureaucrats. At least it will save on cab fares where the civil servants are summoned to Parliament to see the ministers every so often. Have them locally downtown in Parramatta. We'll find a great public building. Blacktown deserves a university campus. Should have had one by now, it needs one. Maybe tied with advanced manufacturing as a tech park around a university, university hub. So we bring, as I said, the huge population of Blacktown in where the rest of Western Sydney is enjoying that university background. Lindy Dietz is here, the great CEO of the city of Campbelltown. We want to see a whole new Campbelltown. The city that, that Whitlam kicked off uh, back in uh, the, the 70s and planning was sort of left behind a little bit to reimagine an entire new Campbelltown medical education hub, sports and arts facilities, things like that, the visioning that you can go for new cities. Olympic Park, the convention centre at the ICC, a great addition to Sydney, it's fantastic. We're loving it so much you can't get a booking for years. It's tremendously successful. Sydney is losing convention business because they can't get to Darling Harbour. Well, the RAS has plans to make the second convention centre properly to expand on its existing exhibition facilities at Olympic Park. We ought to all get behind it, along with another indoor arena, along with maybe an improved tennis centre and other areas to develop that facility into what it really needs to be, the playground, a proper town centre with a, with a metro to the, to the front door, and finally finish the dream that was Olympic Park. There's been left little in abeyance that we all need to get behind. SBS Film Studios, with the greatest of respect. SBS, Australia's multicultural broadcaster, living up there in effectively monocultural Artarman. Seriously, guys. 
if we can't simply, and uh, I think we appealed to the now Prime Minister when he was the Minister of Communications and had a positive nod at the time, he seemed supportive, the then Premier thought it was a great idea to quote Mike Baird. Well, we haven't backed off. Not only do we want SBS headquarters going to, going to Liverpool, we want a film studio there. So the burgeoning talent, creative talent of Western Sydney can start telling its stories, its way, its many and varied stories, and not trying to find our Tarman by leaving a, a crumb of white bread, bread crumbs to our Tarman. Let's be serious and get, get SBS to multicultural Sydney. Penrith, the great Penrith Lakes. This really could be the harbour that Western Sydney has always been denied. It's a magnificent development. It's going to take a lot of vision. But to think about that as a recreational hub, as part of the adventure tourism spectacular that is Penrith these days at the foot of the mountains, these are the sort of big projects we want to think about. And what brings it together? We're back to where we're, we're still waiting for the government. I'm hoping by about February, March next year, a positive statement that they will proceed with a bid for the Commonwealth Games. Well, we've already hosted Olympic Games at Western Sydney. We can sure as well host a Commonwealth Games. And as I'll tell Peter Beattie this afternoon, if the Gold Coast can do it, Western Sydney certainly can, and how that could bring together. There with beach volleyball in Campbelltown. We love it. So a lot's changed in 30 years in Western Sydney. A lot's going to change in the future. My fear is, as I finish you and hand you back to go and have a nice bit of morning tea and, and think about some of the concept. What hasn't changed in Western Sydney in 30 years? What's the greatest single change we need in Western Sydney past 30 years? Eels haven't won a premiership since 86. I hope it's not 2050 I'm waiting to, to, get, to hold, the, hold the cup again high. Um, I'll leave with you a thought, ladies and gentlemen. We're spending all day talking about the future of Western Sydney and how, what role we can play, and we can have fun with it. But we're going to house 2.2 million more people in the next 32 years. Emboldened by the work the Greater Sydney Commission's done in having public sector think about it, we need to get behind and match that with local government, community, private sector. How do we step up? How do we form the partnerships, the funding partnerships, the governance partnerships, uh, a bit of imagineering, not just engineering, because we're sick of playing catch up. We're in the middle of that, we think we'll get there. But let's get ahead of the game and make this truly the Western Sydney of which we can all be proud. Thank you. And enjoy some food.